We're making a tier list today. We're tier listing the best cartoon vehicles of all time. Based on a little bit of our criteria, we're not going to be including mechs, like anime mechs and transformers and stuff like that, just because there are so many. So, homage, Lucas, in editing. Here's a bunch of mechs. There's a lot. Sentient vehicles are allowed to a degree. Sentient vehicles are only allowed if they provide transportation as their primary purpose. In general, a talking car works because its actual function is to transport things, versus a horse, even though that's why some people use it, horses' purpose in life is much more complex than that. You must ask the horse what their purpose in life is. I just realized we just completely didn't include anything Star Wars. There are just too many ships in Star Wars, so if one thing's on the table, too many things are on the table, and we don't want to deal with it. So yeah, same reason we're not doing mechs, I suppose. We could say we're not doing Star Wars, too. Here are a bunch of pictures! I'll just take it one by one. Ah uh, yeah, let's get started! This is the Toyota AE84 from a very popular anime. We haven't seen it, but we've heard it's awesome, so unfortunately, we don't have enough information to decide. The next one is Infinity Train, which is also in Don't Know tier, because, shockingly, we haven't seen it. And yeah. I want to draw attention to the fact that we haven't seen it. Let me in the know in the comments how bad that it is that we haven't seen it. The Doraemon Time Machine, which is from a very popular anime that I have not seen it whatsoever. Lucas hasn't seen it. We don't know, but the time machine looks pretty freaking cool from the one image that we have. Anytime I can do something stupid that makes you happy, I'm there. <laughs> Starting from the shittiest at the bottom of F tier, we have the F Zero car from uh, Smash Bros. I guess it's from the animated F Zero anime series that nobody knows about and didn't go anywhere, so that's why it's firmly at the bottom. It is a blue race car. The Quest Jet from Johnny Quest, one of Lucas and I's favorite shows. Yes. Uh, the only reason it's an F tier is that we kind of decided that what we love about Johnny Quest is not the jet. We remember the image, but not quite memorable enough. The next is the Go Gadget car. I bet a lot of people will be surprised to see that one in F tier, but honestly, when you see what else is on there, it's just honestly a lot less interestingly designed of a car. It has gadgets and stuff. It is a gadget. It's a car. It has things. It's cool. But everything else above it is just that much cooler. Gadget Mobile, what say we bring these fiends to justice? Oh, I'm on them like ugly on its. The Paddy Wagon, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Feast your eyes, Patrick. What is it? The Paddy Wagon. If you had seen the live stream, you would know that people were at Lucas trying to get him to raise this even higher, myself included. I love the Paddy Wagon. It is just a fun memory of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie that I thought was underrated and sort of closed out the original great era of SpongeBob. Despite that, we sit here with the Paddy Wagon in D tier. You don't need a license to drive a sandwich. The next one we did was Santa's sleigh, and we decided to choose the iteration from Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer because that is the hardest hitting of all of Santa's sleighs. Despite that, it still lands firmly in D tier because it's honestly a red sleigh, and despite how fairy tale magic it is, it's honestly not that creative a design. Also, we didn't include the reindeer based on our criteria, which we mentioned earlier. The Pizza Planet truck is an Easter egg that has been in tons of different Pixar movies. We thought it would be fun to include in the list, even though it doesn't have quite the same amount of screen time as the rest of these vehicles. But, very fun thing to look out for if you're watching a Pixar movie. I seriously doubt he's getting this kind of mileage. The next one we have is the Jensen's UFO. Again, one you might expect to see a little bit higher, but in all honesty, it's not as special as a lot of the other ones. It's a fairly basic UFO design, it's green. And the real reason we like it is because we actually like the intro to the Jetsons. Meet George Jetson! Cyborg's car from Teen Titans. It's not one that I remember very well, and I don't think that it's one of the sticking points of the series, so it ended up in D. But Cyborg has a great relationship with that car, so I like it. Booyah! Check out my baby's proton cannon! The Futurama ship! The ship itself has a fairly basic design, but it's very integral to the show, and a lot of the show takes place in the ship, and I remember the ship being involved in a lot of really cool plot lines. But again, 
the ship in of itself is kind of basic, so still D tier. We have the rust bucket from Ben 10. We love this one because Lucas and I watched a ton of Ben 10 together growing up. It's got these satellites to help look for aliens and stuff, but ultimately what we really loved about it was the character of Uncle Max and the aliens in the show. Uh, so even though the rust bucket is great, it didn't quite elevate to the next level. Better hang on to something. This may get a little bumpy. One of our lovely chatters happened to point out that I will include in this YouTube video that everyone should watch the Twitch streams in real time because YouTube videos are never gonna know how heated this debate got between making this tier list because there is a good chance that I'm gonna be editing out most of the conversation. So go, YouTube. Subscribe, Twitch, follow, whatever. You know what I mean. The next one is Dick Dastardly. If anyone's familiar with Wacky Races, that's probably where you're familiar with this character, even though they did have their own show. This is the car that they piloted to very many nefarious plot lines throughout the show. And its design is pretty good. It's somewhat gothic, but it doesn't hold as well as some of the cooler designs, even within the context of its own show. Next up, we've got Mach 5 from Speed Racer. Very iconic anime, very iconic vehicle. When you think Speed Racer, you think of that vehicle. We actually ended up using this one as the benchmark. Great legacy, perfect at sea, and then we sort of gauged everything else around where that one sat. Here comes Speed Racer, he's a demon on wheels. Speed Buggy is the OG talking car predating for Herbie, Herbie, for, what is it called? Herbie the Love Bug. This was pretty much a Scooby-Doo spin-off that ended up creating a somewhat charismatic car that gave birth to a lot of better car ideas later. They raced, they raced today. Next, we have... I should cover this one. This is the Going Mary. The only reason that this isn't higher on the list is because there are other One Piece ships that are higher on the list. This was the one that the Straw Hats pretty much started their journey with. There's a lot of sentimental attachment. One Piece fans will probably be excessively offended that this is not immediately S tier. The design is more basic than other designs that are very, very cool on this list, despite how much of an emotional connection I personally have with the ship and how I hate to see it in C tier. <laughs> Next up, we have the Jolly Roger, which we thought hard about, because to Lucas's point, the ship itself is just uh, kind of a background character. It's a vessel for uh, the characters to sort of uh, have their moments. For the but it's so incredibly nostalgic, and the art is by Mary Blair. I was not willing to drop it any further. I wanted it even higher. Jolly Roger, good points on both sides, ultimately ends up in C. This is the Axiom. This is the ship that piloted humanity in WALL-E. And you know what? It's pretty funny to me that this literally just encapsulates a dystopian society. And even though the ship design isn't, in my opinion, very standout or special or that unique, and you don't really even see it very often in the movie, the concept of this spaceship literally being the new home for humanity is a very strong concept. We got the hover car from Jimmy Neutron, another one of Lucas and I's favorite from childhood. It encapsulated what made Jimmy Neutron great. This little inner tube put together to create an invention that ended up being a recurring uh, vehicle that we remember from years to come. Hey Jimmy, has anyone ever told you you're a boy genius? The next one is our most recent We Hate This Creator Now and for very good reason. Even despite all of the controversy, which I'm kind of joking about and is actually very serious, the ship is not that special other than that one episode where it has a very sassy scene. Otherwise, it's honestly just kind of a pretty trashy UFO ship, which is a cool concept, but it's kind of the same cool concept that Jimmy Neutron actually already did. Next, we've got the Treasure Planet ship. This is, a lot of people would argue, an underrated movie from Disney history. Treasure Planet took the Treasure Island concept and put it in space with an airship. This was one of the absolute coolest parts of the entire movie, whether it was one that you ended up loving or not. In C tier because it may not be as memorable or have as much of a legacy as some of the ones that end up coming above it. such as the Ghostbusters car, which has quite the legacy, quite a wide variety of creative things involved in it. And even though, in my opinion, it's a still a fairly basic design, it has a lot of heart, and it has stuck in the memories of people for a very good reason. The Wild Thornberry's car, the Com V. As we discussed this, we sort of realized that one of the only things we remember vividly about the Wild Thornberries is this car. It's got a cool interior that it's able to interact with the outdoors, which makes sense for the theme of the Wild Thornberries. We find it underrated. I wouldn't give up our life in the wild for anything. 
bottoming out B tier is Penelope Pit Stop, the hottest pink car on this list and why it deserves to be so high up on this list. This car has actual lips. This car has more lips than you do. Design carries it this high on the list because it's just this cool. Next we have Tailspin, which I have long said is one of the best Disney afternoon shows, if not the best, and doesn't really get the credit it deserves. As far as the vehicle itself, kind of just a seaplane, and we had some discussion about that. It is. But it's also an iconic seaplane that was the vessel for the entire show, and so much of Tailspin took place with air pirates in the sky that it needed to be at least there. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles party bus I don't know much about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Alec and I haven't seen it, but it seems like it's super integral to how they actually function in the world, and it's called the Party Bus. We've got Greg's van from Steven Universe. It may just be a van, but it's got heart, and it ended up in B tier. He drove his van right into our hearts, and he drove his van right into our B tier. Pearl, thank you so much for fixing my van! Oh, oh yeah! Very good. Thanks. Yeah. I was thinking about it the whole time. Wait, you did good! You landed the plane! <laughs> Speaking of planes, this is a cat bus. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people I'm already seeing in chat saying how cat bus is this low. See, my neighbor Totoro is just such a mellow, underplayed one of Ghibli's films that I don't actually think it stands out as some of the other characters, some of the other vehicles. Obviously it is a cat that is a bus and that is very creative, but beyond the juxtaposition, I never actually felt like it gave that much more to the story because we didn't see it all that often actually. B tier is high. I say this <laughs> as if I'm defensively talking about it because I know y'all are coming for me. And while you do, hit like and subscribe. The Beatles Yellow Submarine. The Beatles, that great band from the 60s and 70s, they made an animated movie. And it's very trippy, has a lot going on, and who doesn't remember that Yellow Submarine song? And if you don't remember that, maybe you remember this cartoon. It's an iconic image, even if you haven't seen the movie. We were Beatles fans growing up, had a rock star dad. This was gonna be high up. I will always watch that one when I'm in the fun mindsets. Anywho, the invisible plane. It's not higher because it's kind of impractical. You can see people in it, and that's ridiculous. And it's iconic, and it's still an invisible jet. Most of this other stuff can be invisible. A lot of it actually can now that I'm thinking about it. A robot plane that you fly by using brain waves. Next we have the Nimbus from Dragon Ball. Kind of an early version of the magic carpet as this thing kind of had a personality of its own and is definitely iconic and something that people remember. Alec and I are not one of those people. Us not having been super familiar, we won't say that more context wouldn't help, but the chat seemed comfortable with B. That's where it ended. It's a cool cloud. Next one is Cruella de Vil's car. This is one that has a shocking amount of fan love. I think that it's just such a villainy, villainous car and people remember that scene of Cruella just screaming her head off and having her awesome psychosis moment driving this car. It's a great villain design. It's very simple, but it's very chic. Up next we have the candy car. Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph drives this in her video game within this universe, Sugar Rush. This Mario Kart meets Candy World scenario. Her vehicle is the most iconic one because we see it the most and it's super important to the plot. And next we have Homer's vehicle. Homer's brother made this for him to be the literal perfect vehicle for the average person. We've seen very little Simpsons, but we got the context that this is a hilarious thing that exists. Put it in A because it was designed to be the best car, and then we found out it made their company bankrupt. B for bankrupt. This monstrosity! cost $82,000. Next, we have the Beep Bop, a spaceship from the iconic anime Cowboy Beep Bop, which I've seen a pretty decent amount of, not the entire series yet. But this is your Firefly anime. Feels like darker sci-fi. I, I had to appreciate the artistry behind it. This is the Ranger plane. It's very integral to the plot. I think the Disney afternoon shows were a really interesting gem in animation history. This particular design was one of the coolest of all of them. I remember it more than I remember most of the things about the show, to be honest. But just above it, an even cooler looking plane from Darkwing Duck. This vehicle is really unique and more unique than you would expect it to be. It doesn't show up a ton in the series, but that design alone, worthy of A tier. 
And this is the Thousand Sunny. I talked a little bit about the One Piece Going Merry. This is the sort of sequel ship. This is the ship that has so much heart and I care so much about with this series. And I'm expecting the Straw Hats to take this ship to the finale of the show and finale of the manga. It means a lot to me and it's honestly just such an enormously dense show that I could talk about how much there is to it for hours, but I won't because probably most of you haven't seen all of One Piece and don't care. But you know what? It's good. One Piece is good. Next we have the Fenton Family Assault Go Ghost We have the Fenton Family Ghost Assault Vehicle. Which I'm sure is going to be edited great. Oh, uh, yeah. This is from Danny Phantom. It is the vehicle that the Fenton Family goes around trying to basically do the Ghostbuster thing. But it does it in a super awesome ectoplasmic way, and it's pretty hilarious that they don't know that they're trying to hunt their own son in the show. A tier. I'll get you for this. The next one is Mr. Toad's car from from I honestly Alec needs Thank to Thank you! This one. Mr. Toad is my favorite, and this is the vehicle from the Wind in the Willow segment. You might know it from the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. This is basically the vehicle that Mr. Toad becomes obsessed with that is the catalyst for him either stealing it or buying it. And you don't really know how it goes till the end, but what really makes it iconic is that this became a Disneyland attraction that is my favorite, one of Lucas's favorite, yes. and we ride around in these cars. The motor mania is real, and that is why it's A tier. I can't be talked out of it. Who's the owner of that, uh... Looking car. The Cinderella pumpkin carriage is iconic. Now, iconicism can't take you all the way up in a tier list, in my opinion, but what can is an iconicism that is well deserved. It defines fairy tale for a reason. This extremely elegantly designed carriage. This carriage has more personality than almost any character in the movie. Yeah, I'll give it to Gus Gus to edge out the carriage. <laughs> This is the motorcycle from Akira. Akira is one of the most beautifully animated powerhouses of anime culture and movie history. It's so hard to even talk about how impactful of a movie this was. So just in terms of the motorcycle, it matches our protagonist's uh, outfit perfectly. The amount of pure color and imagery and intention that went into the art is the reason why I want to put this so high up. Because this motorcycle adds such a flair with color and pacing and movement and how it's animated and it adds so much to the movie and it is iconic for a good reason. It's the movie poster for a good reason. Polar Express. We know some of you hate the animation. I don't. It's magical to me. Regardless of how you feel about the animation, this is a beautifully magical vehicle that is amazing for not just the season, but holds up as a great animation vehicle. The train stands the test of time. How many vehicles on here are their show? There is no Polar Express without the actual Polar Express. Well, that's more like it. And now to top us off with some S-tier goodies. We're gonna start with the Flintstones. This is a classic, really funny, creative design that stands the test of time because it's a funny design. You have people so impractically walking a car, definitely heavier than just walking without the car, and it's hilarious. And I think, again, when we were talking about it originally, I said something about how this was kind of supposed to be more of an adult show when it came out and was making adult sitcom style humor, and this was kind of a little bit of a commentary on, like, rush hour and how it feels like you're actually walking to work. And it, it's a very clever joke that, uh, you know, kind of nested its way in animation history for a good reason. I also love is who framed Roger Rabbit, and we are talking about Benny the Cab, just your zany, classic type of cartoon vehicle that you can imagine plopped into the real world. And the way it moves in the real world and still emulates its cartooniness yeah. is so iconic. And who framed Roger Rabbit in general, the way that they do everything, has not been done before in as good of a way. This was another easy choice S tier the moment we talked about it. Never need a ride, just stick out your phone. Hey, share the road, be late. And another easy S-tier choice was the Magic School Bus. We definitely wanted this stoner lesbian teacher to take us on a journey in this trippy-ass magical bus. And I'm so glad that I grew up with content like this. This bus can do one thing that nothing else on this list can do. Okay, maybe the Batmobile. Okay. Maybe there's like a couple that can say this, but it is every other vehicle on the list. The Magic School Bus has been a germ. It's been a rocket ship. It's been a submarine. It's been a plane. It's been microscopic. It's been huge. It's gone, it's gone back and forward in time. It's been a time machine. It's so creative and it's a kid's show and it gave 
children this like incredibly imaginative world to work with from a super young age. Next we have the Steamboat from Steamboat Willie. While this was only shown once in a seven minute short, yeah. it is arguably one of the most important short films of all time in animation because it was the origin of Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse existed within this setting. You can picture him whistling as he drives the steering wheel for this ship. All part of animation history in such a beautiful and iconic way that you can't not put it in S tier. And the next one, is the Batmobile. The Batmobile is another one that kind of has a claim to fame to being a lot of other things because it's such a creative and transformative car. We're choosing the one from the uh, Batman animated series also. It's the Batmobile. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. S -tier. Speaking of other easily iconic vehicles, we have the Mystery Machine. Ultimately, the wild thing about it is just a van with some really nice paint, but that has been so integrally part of the Scooby-Doo franchise for so many years. Basically a character, the way that it moves with the gang, it is Mystery Inc. One above it, and probably one of the weirdest ones for people to see up here, is the ship from the Atlantis movie. This ship had one of the most impressive initial scenes that I will ever remember having seen in theaters as a child. The CGI was actually really incredible and made this thing feel massive. The way that it was animated underwater in the movie gave such a feeling of tension and magic and like, it really felt like this amazingly, uniquely designed ship was really created by this gruff band of inventors and, and it makes sense for the characters, it makes sense for the world, it, it looks like this industrial man-made thing going to search for Atlantis on a treasure hunt and it's so, so good that its design carries it above even the iconicism that it unfortunately never got. The magic carpet from Aladdin. I didn't expect it to be this high when we started, but here we are. You get the color from this magic carpet and the design, but you also have a sentient character that basically uses its bristles as hands and it emotes so much without having a face. It does a better job of characterization than tons of characters from animation. It sticks out just as being this beautiful, creative vessel. And again, one of the most iconic scenes of all time. Round it out, man, the very last one. The newest of the new worlds. I don't even know if that makes any sense. Hell's Moving Castle. What an amazingly designed vehicle. It's the CGI, the animation, obviously all of that, but the way that it's alive and Calcifer keeps it alive, it's magic, and without Calcifer there, it physically falls apart. It's walking, it's magic, it transports somehow too. And it has so much character and emotional relevance to the story and characters on top of how well designed it is. And it's iconic for Studio Ghibli. And the wizard who made it pretty much made it just to avoid taxes in the government. And you know what, if that's not a mic drop, if that's not what closes us as I like and subscribe. Avoid the man. If you enjoyed this, you probably really would have enjoyed the entire discussion that we had for the course of three hours that chat weighed in on and actually helped make this list. So if you weren't part of that, you can be next time. Let us know what vehicles you, that you love that we didn't talk about in the comments or what things you disagreed with us on because obviously in the love of animation there are a million different perspectives to look at the world so we want to hear yours. Everyone in the chat say goodbye YouTube. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Hype. Say hype. Say things. Hi. Send things. All the cheers. Woo! Paddy wagon. Why would you say We're that? Out. Yes, success. We Why? landed the plane. No. Yes, no, closing. Perfect ending. <laughs> Lovely. Goodbye. <laughs>